I sometimes wonder if not there are some physics fix for climate change. Self-replicating nanobots that collect carbon dioxide, artificial super trees or clean energy from the vacuum. Then I wake up. But today I have a paper from a physicist who knows how to make dreams reality. He's figured out how to slow climate change with nuclear bombs. A worldwide nuclear war would, besides killing a lot of people, also blast huge amounts of ash into the atmosphere, which would cool the entire planet. This nuclear winter, as it's called, would result in crop failures and could kill billions of people within five to ten years. That's one way nuclear bombs could fix climate change, but it's not what the new paper is about. Instead, the new paper is a plan to save the world that, leaving aside the thing with a bomb, is actually quite modest. It's an idea for carbon dioxide removal known as enhanced weathering. Weathering is the process by which some minerals naturally absorb carbon dioxide and bind it. The common way of doing this is to produce a lot of these minerals, grinding them and then distributing them over large areas of land. But it's expensive to produce that much stuff and cumbersome to distribute it. That's where the nuclear bombs come in. The author suggests that we place a nuclear bomb underneath the sea at several kilometers depth in an area with a lot of basalt. This is a type of rock that naturally absorbs carbon dioxide. All that water would absorb the shock of the explosion and ocean currents would then distribute the basalt. This would suddenly make a lot of water very good at absorbing carbon dioxide. And the oceans take up a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the carbon dioxide goes into the water and then into the finely distributed rocks and stays there. The author estimates that an explosion with a yield of about 81 gigatons TNT equivalent could undo 30 years worth of carbon dioxide emissions. That would result in a temperature decrease of of roughly 1.5 degrees Celsius. It'd be substantial. He estimates the cost with $10 billion that doesn't even buy you a Twitter on a rainy day. He's even picked a location that's the Kerguelen Plateau, basically in the middle of the Indian Ocean, home of the Kerguelen Islands, also known as Desolation Islands, uninhabited except for some French soldiers who use it to try new baguettes on penguins. But you won't be surprised to hear that there are a few problems with this idea. One is that 81 gigatons is about 1,000 times larger than the biggest nuclear bomb ever detonated. This was the Tsar bomb, a hydrogen bomb that the Soviets blew up in 1961 just for show, basically. It had a yield of about 50 megatons of TNT, about 3,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. For this new proposal, we'd need a bomb that's another 1,000 times larger, so that's 3 million Hiroshima bombs. There are also some safety concerns, such as radioactive contamination of the seafloor, what happens if that explosion blasts a lot of water vapor, also a greenhouse gas, into the upper atmosphere, or what all that basalt would do to the oceans. Though it's a naturally occurring and rather inert substance, but maybe we shouldn't trust physicists on this. And no one asked the fish. This isn't the only world-saving tech idea that scientists have come up with over the years. One impressive idea is to build big chimneys that would be some kilometers high and basically give the heat on the ground a better escape route to space. I like this idea because such a chimney wouldn't only cool the planet, it would also produce energy because the warm air wants to rise. The inventor of the idea has a prototype that's about four meters high, so now we just need to make this a thousand times larger problem solved. A similar proposal is to let warm air rise up in balloons and then release the air at high altitude. That would take a lot of balloons though. Another world-saving idea is to put giant mirrors into space between us and the sun to reduce the energy that our planet absorbs. 
It has a similar effect as putting tiny particles into the stratosphere, but has the advantage that by moving the mirrors, the effect can be adjusted. These ideas all have a similar problem, and that isn't the cost or even the enormous scale and necessary material. No, the major problem is that they'd all require cooperation among many people. And lack of cooperation is exactly the reason why we don't manage to phase out fossil fuels in the first place. Though I doubt it's going to happen, I personally very much like the nuclear bomb idea. And I'd say, go for it. What's 10 billion dollars among friends? At the very least, we'd get an amazing bang for the buck. You also get an amazing bang for the buck from today's sponsor, Ground News. Ground News is a news platform that collects and summarizes news which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Take, for example, the recent news about the US update to their science and technology pact with China. You see right away that this news has been much more covered by the left than by the right. And here, in the bias comparison, you can see that the left employs loaded language, while the right focuses on mitigating risks. You also get a factuality rating for each news item, and it tells you whom the media outlets are owned by and where the news has appeared. Ground News also has this great feature called Blind Spot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. And of course, I have a special offer for you. That's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use our link ground.news Sabine or use the QR code so they'll know I sent you. The future's here already. You just need to know where to find it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.